a Squarespace from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Your first purchase. These fucking Invisalign been kicking my ass. Now let's start the show. How long you got to do the Invisalign? I don't know, man. I think you're about to tap out, huh? I think I'm about to tap out. I don't you care, tapped out bro. before. I'm ready to just get the veneers. Everybody else got the big fake joints. Yeah, why not just get the veneers? Well, I couldn't get the veneers because I had a, te- a tooth in the back that was crooked. Yeah. And she tried to straighten that, so she just ended up pulling it. So now I just got the veneers on to straighten that out. and then I mean, the Invisalign to straighten that out. Then she's going to add uh, the veneers in later. Oh, so you have to do this in order to get the veneers. Yes. Mm. Yeah, so that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, he's Steve a Harvey. Did you see that clip? That he's was not going a businessman. He's a businessman. Mm. Did you see that clip with the cars? Oh, that we said, why do I buy all these cars? I think that was on Earn Your Leisure, wasn't it? Maybe I don't, I don't remember. He said, why do I buy? All these I didn't watch it. I saw the headline. <laughs> He said something about why do I buy all these nice cars? Because uh, if I go broke, like they'd be nice to sleep in or something like that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't watch that. Yeah. Because I'm not in the cars. Yeah. You know how people say they're not in the cars? Because, you know, when you when you don't have no money, and, like you see a Phantom go by, a Bentley go by, and you'd be like, I don't want that. Yeah. I never buy that. But you can't afford it. You know how you know you really don't give a fuck about that shit? Why? When you can afford it. And you don't care. And still don't give a fuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Let me hear the clip. I never heard this. I watched this interview too and don't remember this part. People ask me all the time, man, why you buy such expensive cars? Cars, if this all go away one day and I got to go back to living in a car. Hilarious. It's going to be that. going to be nice. <laughs> phantom. I'm being a phantom. in the backseat of a phantom. You want to see me the side of the road? Stretched out with a refrigerator. I got a refrigerator in there. <laughs> I got lights in the ceiling. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be home to see. <laughs> you think people forget Steve Harvey's a, Harvey's a comedian? No. Too you, legendary. Too you legendary. sure? Dude, Man. the Kings of Comedy was so legendary. Classic. Maybe, maybe the youth, they never ended up seeing it. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. But how nah. was your week? Um, how was my week? I don't know. Uneventful. Uneventful? Yeah. Same. Yeah, Al just celebrated his birthday. I uh, saw him, man. Yeah. He had a dress on on Instagram. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a dress. No, I didn't. What was it? <laughs> that was me at Burning Man. But it was still a dress. It wasn't a dress. It was actually a skirt. <laughs> 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 I mean, you gotta get, you gotta get it. You gotta get it right, y'all. Come on, bro. Sequence. It looked good though. What do you think about that? Do you think that like men will be more uh, will embrace the cross dressing a little bit more? I think they already have. There's no more gender. There's no more anything. Oh my god. What? I guess, man. Mm. There's still gender. I if there's no gender, why do we have pronouns? I have no idea. I don't understand any of this shit. Ayanna Von Zant was on Breakfast Club and she gave the best answer. What she, she said? said I don't understand any of it, so I don't speak on it. Mm. And that's how I feel. Unless I just feel like something's, you know, totally un, un, unfair. Like we had the, uh, what, what happened? You saw the school in Vermont, right? What happened? The Vermont, the Vermont high school, the girls' high school team boycotted a game with a trans player, and they got banned from tournaments. Like I'm reading it now. A Vermont school that refused to play against an opposing basketball team with a trans player won't be able to participate in future ter- tournaments to Vermont Principals Association announced on Monday, Mid-Vermont Christian School forfeited a game on February 21st in an out-of-state tournament against Long Trail School. We withdrew from the tournament because we believe playing against an opponent with a biological Playing with an, a playing an opponent with a biological male jeopardizes the fairness of the game and the safety of our players. That is what the head of the school, Vicky Fogg, said in a statement obtained by the Guardian. Yo, my, I don't know who this guy was, and my bad, I'm not remembering what, what your name is. But uh, there's a comic that had a joke about. Uh, he goes, "I'm okay with uh, trans women competing in women's sports uh, as long as I could bet on it." <laughs> that, 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 that shit was fire. That is hilarious, bro. And that literally will be what changes everything. Yeah, because once you can gamble on it, and we know who's gonna win every single time. What I think is the the betting agencies will say you can't bet on it. Yeah, and once you can't bet on the sports, they'll stop sponsoring 
these huge events. And when they stop sponsoring these huge events, the events will start to go, well, we need that sponsorship money. Yeah, it's got to yeah, come yeah. from somebody. And then they'll say, sorry, you can no longer compete because we don't have this money coming in. It hasn't hit the pockets just yet. Yeah. Once it hits the pockets, everybody gets settled. That's going to change everything because clearly listening to women isn't. Ooh, you know what, what does that I mean? mean? That means that, you know, they tell us to listen to women in regards to everything else. What would you rather do? Watch women's sports or listen to women? I like watching women's sports. I love uh, women's basketball. All right, well, I'll that's the answer that to the question. It's not like I was trying to be sexist or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect answer to the question right there. You answered it perfectly. I just gave you an I like, ultimatum. I like, I like doing both. Um, Gun to your head. Gun to listen head. to a woman or watch them play sports. Listen to a woman. And when I say sports, I'm not talking about like porn. I'm talking about like basketball, golf. <laughs> this you know guy what I mean? Is crazy. Like, listen to a woman. Yeah. But it has nothing to do with the sports. It's the fact that if I had to choose one, I'm gonna choose listening to women because listening to women has gotten me very far in life. Yes, it has. Yes. Listening to women has gotten me very 100%. far. One hundred percent. So I would definitely listen to women. What's the best advice you ever got from a woman? <sighs> Honestly, the best advice I ever got from a woman was um listen more. Listen more, talk less. Ooh. Listen, listen, listen more, talk less. And I mean, it depends what woman you talk about. Like my mom, of course, gave have given me great advice. But one of the things that she told me when I was young, read things that don't pertain to you. Um, I remember a woman named Darcy Alexander telling me something that stuck with me once I had kids. She was talking to me about relationships. And she was telling me about, like, you know, we talking about our significant others. And she was like, you think you love your girlfriend now you'll really know if you love her once you have kids. Because when you have kids, you experience love on like the purest level. Mm -hmm. And if you love your significant other like that, then that's really, really love. Mm. And I feel that way. I, feel, I love my wife the way I love my daughters. You mm. know what I mean? So I mean, I've gotten mad. I mean, I've gotten too much good advice from women over the years. But I was saying like with this, what you said is, is probably the Would answer. Would you like to know my best advice what, I ever got from women? What's the best advice you got from women? I remember, uh, God, I think I was like 26 years old. And um, this girl this girl said to me, I got to get the phrasing right. She, Oh, she said, uh, wrong hole. <laughs> 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 so that was good advice that I got. Great advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great advice. Yeah, because I could have had a dick full of shit. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but then I didn't. Instead, you gave her a vagina full of dick. Woo! And, you got a, and you got a nut. <laughs> Damn, dude, that was fire. The way you flipped that, you could. There were so many things you could have got wrong. <laughs> but you're a master of the English oh, language, right there. Man. That was incredible. Shout out Larsa Pippen, though. But salute to all the women. No, I'm just saying salute to all the women, though, because nobody's clearly listening to women. They need to listen to women, yo. When women say this isn't fair, it isn't fair. They Wait, know. What? When women say it's not fair for them to go against people who were born biologically male. Mm. They tell us to listen to women in regard to everything else. Yeah. But when it comes to them saying this isn't fair, we all got to shut the fuck up. 100%. That makes zero sense to me. And I think that uh, that Vermont team is, is absolutely right. If they're saying that allowing biological males to participate in women's sports, that's a bad precedent for the future of women's sports in general. If they're saying it's not fair, if they're saying it's not safe, who are we to tell them otherwise? You know what's funny is like, anytime I talk to anybody trans about this issue, they're like, this is the least of our concern. I, I agree. Like every, every trans person I talk about this, they're like, playing sports is the least of our concern. Yeah. We're trying to not get killed for no reason. We're trying to not get beat up in the streets for no reason. Yeah. We're trying to make sure that we can get like apartments and like the building won't stop us from yeah. being able to live there. But being able to play volleyball in middle school or high school or wherever the hell it happens or college is not our, our number one on our list of priorities. And I get it. It's gonna be this, this, this is gonna be interesting when this translates to other areas though. When mm. like you know it goes into corporate America, and you have executives who have to you know check off boxes and you know put women in these in these C suites, mm. and they were like they you know it's, they, they they check off the box by putting you know 
just just men saying, "Hey, I identify as a as a woman." <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I would do that. But that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I can see people being that devious. A hundred percent. You know, especially in in in, in corporate. America. A guy did that, and I think El Salvador in a divorce. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. He's like, I identify as a woman, so I could get my kids. No. Yeah. yeah. And he well, got the kids. Too. And he got the kids. No. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. See what I'm saying? You can't take kids away from their mother. That's what I'm saying. That 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 that's what's that's what's gonna happen when and when it gets to like that corporate American stuff. That's when people are gonna Yo, start being Trump like, Whoa. Did Trump get arrested? We're recording this on the Tuesday. Did he get arrested yet? Or Trump's not? not getting arrested, guys. Ah, Come on. Don't do this. Don't do this. <laughs> what? Don't do this. He's not getting arrested, don't guys. Don't do on. this. Somebody go find Are the video where I said these exact serious? words to Charlemagne, and you were saying he's getting arrested. I'll bet any amount of money. I said this three years ago. I Put it like this. Hold on. If they indict a, if they indict a former president, it's not going to be for these charges. These charges are weak as fuck, bro. Hold on, hold on. But you did say... Not this guy. That, that you did say that he was going to get arrested, and I was like, they won't arrest a former president. Yeah. I think I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, think, I, I think I agree with you. I don't see it happening, bro. Uh, this so, man... I, I can't change my mind. So, upon yo, further you review. You said it with I so love, much conviction, I though. I, I, I believed in the checks and balances. I, I believed it. that nobody is above the law. <laughs> Teflon Don has proven me wrong until further notice. And I still don't think that they'll do it. But I don't like think this. they'll do it either. If you got, he's got all of these federal charges he's facing, right? Merrick, Merrick Garland. We already know the classified documents shit. You might as well throw that out. They done got caught everybody with classified right, documents. Right. That's out the window. The I thought it was some taxes in New York that they wanted to catch him on. That's still open. That's still open. Yeah, still open? they're still investigating that one. Oh, I didn't see that yeah. one. But every like, one of these rich motherfuckers breaks the law with taxes. But and, and man, basically, they're saying that this small thing is just to hold them, and then there's going to be a bunch of other charges They're saying everywhere. this shit is a misdemeanor. Nah, no, I know. Saying, this is just like... What they're saying is, look. Trump, don't run for president. Yeah. That's what they're saying. But and so, he's not getting the message. So why make him bigger? You know what this shit is, man? You remember in Endgame when Thanos got hit in the chest? And he's like... <sighs> You should have went for the head. Yeah, if it's yeah. not a headshot, yeah. don't do it. So rumor is, is that a bunch of charges are going to start dropping from everywhere around the country. It, it, so they, they, they said New York, the Atlanta ballot Georgia, shit. and the yeah. federal charges. That's only five. I heard five solid ones. That's a lot. Not really, because this shit is a misdemeanor. Like, yo, yeah, I, you really need more than this to arrest a, a president. Yes, bro. and they talk about they, yo, they talk about indicting him, but not handcuffing him. Yo, all you're doing is that making them bigger. I guarantee nah, you over the happened. last couple of days, all you've seen is so many donations going to Trump shit. I mean, that is 100% right. If if you arrest him and he gets off, he's president guaranteed. They say this is a mis They say this right here in New York is already a guaranteed misdemeanor. And I'm going to tell you what else is fucked guaranteed up about misdemeanor? it. Guaranteed misdemeanor? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like they, it won't be a felony. They say it uh, won't be a felony. Uh, uh, but I'm saying even putting him through this process is going to be enough to galvanize... Yeah. Already Every happening. person who is anti-establishment, because this is abuse of power from the establishment. Already happening, man. People it's, that I've talked to, did somebody just somebody sent me this? It's not it was like, power. You don't think? Nah, they because like he actually did these crimes. It's just usually they don't in know the if this past, is a crime, would, though. Nah, it is though. They don't know if this is a crime because they said that, that, that somebody sent me this yesterday. It was like this isn't like you know uh, one of the mobsters with tax evasion. It's more like one of the mobsters stealing a carton of cigarettes when he was on the come up. Not nah, so the DA never really charges people unless they know they can win. Like their success rate is crazy hot. Yeah. So they've so, been investigating this one for so long. They and threw they, it out though. They no, threw it out years but this ago. is just um, they used campaign funds to pay off um, Stormy Daniels they can't, allegedly. They, exactly. They can't prove if it was actual if, campaign if funds. If the lawyer starts talking, they can. I don't think that's going to happen. So but, so here, now it's all contingent on the lawyer. So they're going to try to put as much pressure as they possibly can. Yeah. But eventually it's going to seem like, I don't know. By the way, we don't even know if the DA really wants to press charges. Well, that's the thing. This I came from Trump. Yeah, Trump but, put this out there. Oh, that's Trump's interesting. Trump's team said we, never, we haven't heard from the DA's office. Trump put this Wait out there. Wait a minute. So <laughs> Trump, oh, wow. He has to be looked at as the victim. He has to be looked at yes. as the underdog. So he's putting this information out yes. so people come to his aid and his in his support. They're afraid of me. They don't want me to run. Look at this. They're trying to arrest me. They're trying to lock me up because they know that I can win. He was cold in these streets. Everybody was on DeSantis. He wasn't. No, he, no they weren't. Not everybody was Bro, on DeSantis. Bro, the GOP mm. primary polls got Trump winning by a landslide. Way I don't know ahead. why we keep saying this. I keep telling. How you sleeping let, on your let, boy? Let, let, me, let me tell 
let me uh, let me clarify. Let, let me restate what I'm saying. Yes, I believe he does win the primary, mm-hmm. but the energy in the Republican Party was towards DeSantis. It seemed like the Republican Party wanted DeSantis to win. That big guy who owns a Citadel, what's his name? Um, it's the uh, hedge fund Citadel. Uh, look that up real quick. Uh, Ken Griffin. Ken Griffin. I, I think Ken Griffin. So, <laughs> yeah, Ken stick. Griffin, he, he actually supported Trump originally, and he switched his allegiance, I think, to DeSantis. A lot of big donors going to DeSantis. So this is the first big push I've seen in the Trump direction but why in a do, while. Why do we, he made it happen himself. Trump still was making raising more money than DeSantis. Raising more money than all of them. And here's the thing. Why do we not yeah. act like the Republicans aren't the biggest dick-riding party in the world? Yeah, they're going to get in line. They're going to get in line. Yeah, but they're, they're hedging their bets, though. Because they, they, they always really, do. Yeah, we've so seen like, this movie but before. They, they did that shit the first term with uh with they put everything in Jeb's coffee. Yeah. Yes. Right. And then Trump oh, caught fire. He did. That's right. That's the thing about this. Yeah, man. I wonder. I I genuinely don't think that people want to deal with the chaos that comes with Trump. I think people enjoy this kind of malaise that we're living in right now where, like, you don't have to worry about spy balloons. A lot of people, if there's global economic collapse, nobody's really caring about it. Like, there's all these crazy <laughs> things that are happening, and then people just aren't really caring. That is wild. And it's very simple. You have a president that doesn't talk about anything, and now you have nothing to rage against. Anytime Biden does talk or mumble, he doesn't say anything coherent enough where, like, you can rage against it. With Trump, everything that he said— became the polarizing issue of the week. Trump made everybody pay attention. Exactly. So nobody's paying attention to really the news. We don't want to pay attention. Yeah. yeah we guess, actually yeah. don't as yeah. human beings. No, everybody's really right. enjoying this time right now, and I don't know if they want to be re-engaged. That's why they say ignorance is bliss. That That is exactly what's happening no, right now. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. It's interesting, though, man. I don't think... I, I don't know if he goes to jail or not, but I don't think he gets indicted for this shit right here. Like, this There's got to be something bigger. It's got to be something bigger. And I'm going to tell you, mm-hmm. he can spend... He's already spending this to his advantage. His advantage. Why? Because Alvin Bragg is black. Who's that? Alvin Bragg is the DA in New York. So when you I thought can, it was a girl. No, he's a black man. He's, Alvin Bragg. He's, there was he's a, fairly new, though. It used there's to a be, black uh, woman that was going after him, too. No, that's his James. Uh, his James is the attorney general. Oh, that's oh, the attorney yeah. general. Alvin okay. Bragg is the DA. So, but both of them, Tiz James was pushing Alvin Bragg to press these charges. All you got to, it's just the optics. This is wokeness. All his followers got to do, go look at his campaign ads right now. Mm. Whose faces in them campaign ads? That's true. Alvin fucking Bragg. Wow. Got them guys speeding down the turnpike trying to get to New York on 26 from the country, coming from Long Island, everywhere. We got to go defend our guy. That, the optics of that, wokeness, black man. Black woman. People don't care about that woke shit anymore, bro. Yes, he's, they yeah, do. He's, he's, he's using the term. Yes. He said oh, this is he's, an attack he's, from the woke. He's 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 late, bro. He's, he's antiquated. It's over. Nobody cares man, about that shit no nah, more. No, 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 no. It's nah, big. Yeah. It's big. No, nah, it's big. Because even DeSantis is using the woke card. Like all of them are using the that's, woke card. They gotta that's get their enemy, card, bro. That's huh? that's what they label all liberals as. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying they gotta figure something else out because the woke shit is kind of done. Like the kids ain't woke anymore. Like the youth, youth, the youngsters out here, like the kids who are in college right now, they're rejecting the wokeness of the generation before them. So they're wild motherfuckers saying all the crazy shit. Like I think white people, uh, well not white people, but the Republican Party co-opted wokeness and did what they always do, which is flipping and bouncing and remix it. So it's not, it's not even cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now you got liberals on TV denouncing wokeness yep. because they know. Republicans have already co-opted it, so they can't even use the phrase anymore. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I, I I just don't see him going to the, the, getting getting indicted for this. I just don't. And if I was if I was a big dog, if I'm Merrick Garland or one of them, I'm telling the DA in New York to fall back. Fall back, man. Yeah, you're just heating them up. Fall back. Let's try to get some of these bigger charges that you know we probably actually can freaking get them on. But I don't mm-hmm. see them in. I don't see them. I don't see them locking up a former president. I've been trying to tell y'all this shit for a long fucking time, yo. Mm-hmm. You no, know? you haven't, actually. This is the first time you've ever said it. <laughs> so, but it's good that you just said it right now, and I almost believed you. <laughs> it's truly remarkable what you're It's just kind of wild. It's just like, yo, why? They've never arrested a former president, indicted a former president. Why would they on these charges? Yeah. Like, these are, these, no. Well, they can't get them on the actual shit. I guess. I mean, Trump's probably... I'm telling you, they, yeah. they're going to get him on this. It will be a misdemeanor. It won't be that serious. They're going to get him on the tax thing. That might be serious because that's more federal. Yeah. So that might actually prevent him from now, running. If, if anything, but, it's the stuff in Georgia. But even once again with that, it's a black woman DA. 
What's the Georgia shit? The Georgia is the uh, I think it's the, the, the election tampering. Yeah. Pull, pull it, pull it up. Georgia. When he was like calling them, tell them, yo, I need you to find the votes. Yeah, he said mm. it was a perfect call. You didn't see him today. Play, play Trump from the day, Taylor. You just had it up. You didn't hear him today, yo. No, he said. Greatest stand up in the country. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's so yeah. lovable. He's so lovable. If he wasn't fucking a threat to the free world, play. if he was on your side, I want a Bullworth. I've always said I want a Bullworth style president. Mm -hmm. And Trump is definitely a Bullworth well, style president. If you've never seen that. the movie Bullworth, is this it? Oh, play Whether this Whether it's shit, the Mar a Lago raid or the unselect committee hoax, the perfect Georgia phone call, it was absolutely perfect. Or the stormy horse face Daniels <laughs> extortion plot. <laughs> They're all sick. Come on, man. It's fake news. Our enemies are desperate to stop us because they know that we are the only ones who can stop them. And they know it very strongly. And they're looking at the polls where not me, but we are up by so much. They can't even believe it. We won twice and now we've got to win a third time. They know that we can defeat them. They know that we will defeat them, but they're not coming after me. They're coming after you. I'm just standing in their way, and I always will stand in their way. Thank you very much. Aren't we exhausted of the they're coming after you, like be afraid every two seconds? It's been no, nice for a few works. years to not be no, afraid. But, but here's the thing. That, that, has been the Democrat, <laughs> that has been the Democratic playbook for years. And the yes. Democratic and Republican. Don't fear. Both of them. Both. both. Republican definitely and both. Democrat. Def definitely both. But no one's afraid right now. It's kind of nice. We're not even afraid of global economic doom. We're not no, I'm, afraid I'm, of I'm, Chinese spy balloons. We're not afraid of anything. There's I'm no not, fear. I'm not afraid because I'm not allowing myself to be afraid. But so many people are afraid of this economy yes, and 100%. their bank accounts and yes. inflation. Are they afraid of <laughs> it? The bank yes, thing, I, did, I, I definitely had some conversations about the bank thing with my financial people. Like, you sure? You know what I mean? That, 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 was, that was scary. But like I'm looking at this article right now. Some Democrats fear arresting Trump could backfire, question screen for charges. Some Democrats fear that the potential charges facing former President Trump from the Manhattan DA are not up to the task and could backfire. Mm. Um, this is an open and shut books and records misdemeanor. Yo, you know what's kind of funny? Now to elevate it to a felony is complicated. You remember all the, uh, remember all the Republicans that were like, yo, we can't give out these, uh, what, what did they call, what were they called? Like bonuses and shit during the pandemic? Stimuluses. Oh, stimulus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, can't yeah. give out all these stimuluses. We can't print this money. We can't do this shit. We can't, it's bad for the economy. You can't do this. What? <laughs> Where are they with all these people who are bailed out at their banks that failed? Like, I want to know where the, the conservatives are who constantly criticize government interference. Oh, got you, got you, I want to know you, where you, they you. are right now when the government interfered and secured their deposits at the banks. I've yet to hear one of them speak out about how inefficient Why government they? is. Why would they? That's their stimulus. Mm -hmm. 100%. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I just, I, I think at some point we just need them to go, okay, you know what? Sometimes it is nice to have a government. Sometimes yeah, it is yeah, nice yeah. that the government has your back. Sometimes yeah. it is nice that the government interferes. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to pay more taxes. I want to pay less taxes. I'd love to. That'd be great. I get where they're coming from. But at the same time, it is nice to have the security of the government Absolutely. there to potentially protect you from cir circumstances like Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, they'll never let the economy totally fucking crash. Uh, famous last words, my boy. Famous last words. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't ask for it. Don't ask for it now. This, this, this article says there are far more serious crimes Trump should be held accountable for. And they said, this is the biggest thing. Bragg's investigation Yo. is just one of three Trump is currently facing, and the charges stemming from it may be the easiest ones for Trump to defeat. A failed prosecution of the former president, who <laughs> opponents have long dreamed of locking up, could only serve to bolster his common refrain that he is the victim of a witch hunt. That's true. Yeah, but also... How are you going to call a girl you paid to fuck horse face? That, that's, that's one of the most audacious things I've ever seen hilarious. in my entire life. That's hilarious. You're Funny. insulting a girl, hilarious. not that you fucked, that you paid, paid to, to fuck. fuck. Bro, Trump is different, bro. Imagine what he says about the girls that just fucked him. I thought he said he never <laughs> fucked her, though. Nah, that's, he smashed. I thought he said, said he never smashed, but he just did it. He settled just to settle or some no. shit like that. No, I think he dicked down. The funniest shit was after Ron DeSantis just made his comments. He called him Meatball Ron? Man, Trump said, he basically, Trump told him like, you know, let me hear it. This is it right here. He called him Meatball ba Ron. That shit no, you got to find Trump's tweet, Talking bro. about this situation with, and look, I don't know what goes into 
paying hush money to a porn star to to secure silence over some type of alleged affair. I just I can't speak to that. But what I can speak to is that if you have a prosecutor who is ignoring crimes happening every single day this guy's get in his eaten jurisdiction up, bro. and he this chooses to voice? go back many many you didn't years see ago clap to this uh, already try no, to say? use something about po- bro, porn Trump kind of go get it. Trump Trump kind of it wasn't the nuke but remember that fucking bomb he sent that big bomb he just dropped in the desert one time you don't remember that shit we was a time when Trump just dropped a big ass bomb in the desert it wasn't a nuke but it was some big ass bomb they never used before. Uh, that was this shit, yo. Mother of all bombs. I thought that was some Russian shit. He dropped that shit in the desert. Uh, hold on, F- let me see. Find it. the shit that Trump said, yo. Trump's about, response about to the Santas and the underage girl. <laughs> Find the shit. Not when he called him Ron DeSanctimonious. No, no, this was last that was night, weak. man. I thought no, Trump was man. rusty. He just got back on stage after a while. Is that it? Uh. Trump suggests, yes, yeah, here you go. Trump suggests DeSantis will face allegations from underage girls or possibly a man after speaking out on Manhattan Pro. I need Formal, to see it. I need to see Formal, the video. He posted a picture. It's like an old picture of Ron DeSantis when he was like a teacher. And it looked like he was partying with like some younger, younger girls. Former President Donald Trump lashed out at Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on Monday after DeSantis spoke publicly about Trump's potential indictment over an apparent 2016 hush money payment to a porn star, warning the Florida governor he might face allegations from a woman, even classmates that are underage are possibly a man. You know what that's basically saying? Fuck with me, you know I got it. <laughs> okay, don't make me do it to you, Dunny, because I overdo it. <laughs> All right, that's what he's saying, bro. People forget when he'll go there. What, yo? He'll when they did there. the whole grabbing by the pussy thing, yeah, and they tried that, and Trump knew they had the debate coming up. Trump went and had a press conference with all the women who have accused Bill Clinton oh, I remember. of sexual... Now he sat them front row. S- front row. He did, the he did a press conference with them first, then sat them front row. I mean, that with was all, I think it was all the women who accused Bill Clinton of sexual assault or stuff, yeah. something like that. Trump said in the Truth Social post that Ron DeSanctimonious will probably find out about false accusations and fake stories sometimes in the future before suggesting it could be about a relationship with a man. <laughs> Some comment critics said we're homophobic or transphobic. What's interesting about that is that would uh, that probably would hurt Ron politically because all of these people are hypocrites, right? Yeah. Because they believe in the Bible so much, but then a lot of them be on the down low and a lot of them be having boyfriends, but they'll look at this and say, oh, you're in a relationship with a man. I can't vote for you. You know, like you're going against what the Bible says. Do you think that he's gay? Do you think Ron is gay? Ron DeSantis? No, man. Well, I've never thought about it. it don't, I don't know. Why do you think he's gay? I mean, I, why would Trump say that? Because he know that could, what could hurt him politically. Are there some pictures? But he's saying there's evidence. Yeah, he got something. He got something. That's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. He's letting them know, don't make me do you to you, Dunny. Because I'll overdo it, okay? <laughs> Fuck with me. You know I got it. <laughs> that's just a shot. Like, hey, Ron, I was in there for four years, bro. Oh, you know what I mean? I had access to everything. I know where all the bones are buried. Okay? And there was a couple in your asshole. <laughs> that bitch, that's what he's saying. That's all he's saying, yo. <laughs> this is this, it's just amazing how they keep playing right into Trump's hands, though, man. Because even with the news. Yeah. Who is going to run against Trump in 2024? When all he does is suck all the air out of the news cycle, yo. Yeah. Like, what the I mean, fuck? is Biden going to run again? I have no idea what Biden's going to do at this point. Yeah. I really don't. I really don't. We'll see, man. What else we got, Taylor? Oh, you want me to pay, want me to pay some bills? Who would you run? On the Democratic side? Yeah. Man, that bench is so fucking weak. I, I, I really don't know, yo. I, I have no idea who the Democrats could even think of motherfucking running. Like, I'm not even joking. I'm not even I have no idea. Um, let's pay some bills. Let's talk about mood, okay? Mood. You new to cannabis? 
are an old pro. There's no denying that many of the products on the market seem iffy at best. And when you want to relax, iffy is the last way you want to feel. Mood puts an end to guessing games, okay? It's 100% federally legal, Delta 8 and Delta 9 THC. You can have ships straight to you. No doctors, no waiting, just affordable legal THC, all right? For a limited time, Mood is giving our listeners free Delta 9 gummies and 20% off your first order. Visit hellomood.com and use our code IDIOTS. I am a gummy person. Mood, feel free to send those my way, okay? Mood offers federal, federally legal forms of THC extracted from hemp plants. All of their products are regularly third-party tested in drug enforcement agency registered labs, sourced from small family farms and grown organically. The experts at Mood have tested and tailored different strains for specific moods like Energize for when you want to seize the day. These things work, by the way. I had some of these that had the labels like energized, creative. I had one that was called happy. And it absolutely positively did make me feel happy, man. It made me feel so happy that I took a little too much and was high the next morning at work. But they have plenty of versatile products that go with whatever mood you're going for. Euphoric, erotic, sleepy, chill, social, focused. However you like to take THC, mood has you covered. Ready for a good time without the guesswork? Order your THC products from Mood today. And for 20% off your first order and free gummies, go to hellomood.com and use promo code IDIOTS. That's hello, M-O-O-D.com, promo code Code idiots for 20% off your order and free gummies. Also, man, I got to talk to you about Talkspace, mm. okay? Because uh, whether you know it or not, gummies and Talkspace go hand in hand. You know I believe in therapy. I'm a big proponent of therapy. And sometimes people wait until something bad happens to talk to a therapist. Why wait? You can get a therapist to, through Talkspace, okay? Therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times, and be a guiding light. Getting started is the most important part. Talkspace makes it easy and affordable. At Talkspace.com, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. There's no need to commute to appointments, miss time at work, or line up childcare in order to attend sessions. It's mental health care made easy, okay? Talkspace lets you send messages to your therapist so you don't have to wait for your next session. Therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times, and be a guiding light. Talkspace can help with any specific challenges you might be facing. It's the number one online therapy platform with licensed therapists in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, substance abuse, relationship issues, and much more. Talkspace is secure and private, using the latest end-to-end bank-grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations, okay? As a Listener of the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. You'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash idiots. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash idiots to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash idiots. Let's get back to the show. We got Let's some church announcements, Schultzy. Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to be uh, I'm gonna be at VCon. I'm going to do a set at VCon. What's that? So Gary V's conference takes place in the uh, Lucas Oil Stadium. Okay. So it's a football stadium. It's going to be kind of interesting. But uh, I told Gary, I said, Gary, I'm going to come, but you're going to get you're going to get these jokes, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's Gary, the you only a wild way. Boy, Gary. That's the only way I'm coming. <laughs> All that corporate shit jokes. you got going on, and you going to bring Andrew Schultz in there. All right. Get what you asked for. Get it because you asked for it. <laughs> so that'll be fun. And then Calgary. I'm going to be up there in Calgary, uh, August 27th, a great outdoors fest, man. That's going to be crazy. Um, I'm excited. I'm I'm very, very excited about that one. That's that's, that's a cool setup. So make sure you go t- tickets for those. Yeah, man. Uh, for what, me. What about you, man? Black Effect Podcast Festival happening April 22nd in Atlanta, Georgia at Pullman Yards, man. Um, it's just going to be a day of music. My man Louis V is providing the soundtrack. We got some of your favorite podcasts up on that stage live. We got the 85 South Show. We got Horrible Decisions with Mandy and Wheezy. Uh, Giselle, Brian, and Robin Dixon. They're going to be there doing Reasonably Shady. We got the Big Facts Podcast with Baby Jade and DJ Scream and Big Bank. Um, Michelle Williams will be there doing her checking in podcast. Just to name a few. Um, we're going to have food. We're going to have uh, the Black Effect Marketplace, which is a place for, you know, uh, a lot of local businesses in Atlanta. Plus, we'll have, you know, merchandise from your favorite podcast that are on the stage. We got a business in a uh, business in podcasting panel and a woman in podcasting panel. Alex Media is going to be on the business in podcasting panel. So, yep. you know, anybody looking to be in the Business of podcasting. We'll have a lot of people there giving you information. My good sister Dolly Bishop, president of the Black Effect Podcast Network, she'll be on that panel as well. Um, 
Damn, I keep forgetting who else is on that panel. Teslin Figaro. Um, uh, I can't remember. I'm sorry, y'all. But it's just going to be a great panel. And man, I just really got to thank y'all because the way we're selling tickets, you know, by April 22nd, we should definitely be sold out or maybe even before. So thank you. Go to eventbrite.com right now to get your tickets, man. Um, go to blackeffect.com for more info. It's all hosted by me and uh, Jess Hilarious uh, from the Carefully Reckless podcast and, you know, stand up extraordinary social media, Jess Hilarious. So come see us in Atlanta on April 22nd, man. It's going to be a great day. There's a lot going on in Atlanta that day. I saw Lil Wayne's performing in Atlanta that oh, day. Oh, wow. Yeah, the fights that night, Ryan Garcia and Gervonta Wait, Tank is that Davis. in Atlanta? No, no, it's not in Atlanta, but they're, they're, the fight is that night. But so, it's in Vegas, that fight. Uh, Where's that fight at? I'm, not sure. I'm pretty sure it's in Vegas. Fight like that got to be in Vegas. Yeah. Got to be in Vegas. But I'm just saying, we're gonna, I know we're going to be watching the fight that night because, you know, Jess is a big uh, fight fan. She, you know, she, she represents Baltimore. Gervonta Davis is from Baltimore. So, <laughs> you know, I'm just tying it all together somehow. But we'll be there. In Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Saturday, April 22nd. Black Effect Podcast Festival. Yeah. Um, Larsa Pippen has sex four times a day. Now, Can we listen. talk about that, though? Yes. No, You're no, telling I, me I, you I had sex that. four yes. times a I night when you were married? Night. She's just saying yeah. she no, could I had sex can. four times a night every night. I never had a day off for, for 23 20 years. years. Oh my God, what? Okay. What? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, what? Yeah. what? Your poor so, vagina. You, you had sex 28 <laughs> times a week. Yeah, I swear. For yeah, but with 23 <laughs> years? Yeah. So on oh the road God. too when you were yes. traveling? I don't we never spent time away from each other. Okay. Like we we had a private wow, plane. I traveled with my kids. Oh. Yeah. Marcus has big shoes to fill. Yeah. Holy we wears the size 15 God. shoes. I think he's okay. Oh. Yo, Andy Cohen is an instigator, my boy. Marcus has big shoes to fill. That's wild. I think that's his name, Andy Cohen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lars okay. is lying. Can we start there? Scotty's one of how many kids? Eight or twelve or thirteen. She, she's lying. And you know, twelve or thirteen kids. I don't right? know. I have no idea how many kids Lars. At got. least thirteen. Scotty Pippen. Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. Scotty's one of thirteen kids. They only got four. Say again. All that fucking. They only got four kids because he reduced the quality. <laughs> <laughs> For a while. I, I, I know she's lying. You know and he was cheating. <laughs> That's crazy. You know who told me she was you know who told me she was lying? Who? Other women. Yeah. Other women was like, yo, there's Haters. no way. Every day, four times a day, every day for 23 years. I mean, I couldn't do it. No periods. So that, that means through periods. Yeah. That means That's not that crazy. That means after after you even have the baby, yeah. you're not even supposed to have sex for six weeks. Yeah. So that means through that. She did some, I saw uh, Nicole Murphy was on my Instagram. She was like, not even a cold, the flu. <laughs> like, you was just healthy the whole time. You made every road trip. Like, come on, yo. And she doubled down on it. Like, yeah. no, that's just true. Like, why? Why do why do people lie for a living? <laughs> <laughs> like, why do we do this? Like, you could just say we had sex a lot. <laughs> we don't have to say we had sex four times a day, every day for 23 years. Come How many on. times? You, you think it was a lot, at least? Clearly, it was a lot if she thinks it was four times a day. <laughs> Remember how you said Alex got hit one time? Or no, the guy got, Alex hit the guy well, one, one time, time but the guy like times, Exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. So clearly, Scotty was hitting it so hard, she must have thought she was getting it four times, four times, a, times a day. Has Scotty talked about this? Like, he's back in the news. Why would he? I mean, why would he? That's nice. Let me tell you something, man. Scotty Pippen is a top 50 NBA player. I think they, last time I checked, they had him at number 33. Could he have been top five if he didn't do this? If these, if this is true, yeah. he's top 15 easily. But if he didn't do it, could he be the greatest ever? With this, he's top 15. Because <laughs> he did all of this while still playing in the NBA. Schultz, tell me how it feels to bust one nut now. Pretty good. Do you have energy to do anything else? No. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> this guy was okay. a top 50 NBA player. Can we Practice, go this NBA, all of that? Can we go Tim Foyle hack? Can we go conspiracy here? Okay. Who is the greatest competitor of all time? Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan and Tom Brady, between those two. Fair enough. And does Michael Jordan believe that he's the greatest of all time? Yes. 100%. Absolutely. And it's very important to him that he's the greatest of all time. Yes. And if he saw an upcoming threat, I don't know, maybe a six. Seven to six, nine point card with unbelievable defense, ball handling ability, passing. Yeah, point a forward. Physical specimen yeah, that yeah, has yeah. not been seen in the NBA before that could potentially threaten his reign. Is it 
below Michael Jordan to find a woman that can catch Dick four times a night to weaken him, <laughs> to destroy his knees, to destroy his back, and potentially to, to destroy the greatness that he could achieve in his career to maintain his top spot. Scotty did have a lot of back issues, right? Shannon yeah. Sharp was throwing it out there. God damn. Is this Michael Jordan's diabolical plan to make sure he's number one? That means that he's been planning this for at least 30, 40 years. Oh, of course. Because he was like, if you do this for me, I promise you my firstborn son. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Full circle. Whoa. Full circle. MJ's the GOAT, That bro. is the GOAT. God MJ's damn. the GOAT. You MJ get his firstborn son. Jesus Christ. Whatever's left of her. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just saying that's a lot. That's a lot. That's do you care? Do you care about this if you if you're the new boyfriend? Does I this mean, bother you that this information is public? It can't feel good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. can't feel good, right? Yeah. It can't feel good. Yeah. I, I I don't know, man. Scotty got a lot of unbelievable stats. This is one I just don't believe. I just don't believe he's putting up these kind of numbers, bro. Yeah, I, I don't. It's, it's unbelievable. This is this is over thirty plus thousand times. That they've had sex, if this is true. Yeah. Now, it's like 33,000 plus. <laughs> That's not hard to do. It's only, how many fits? What, 52, how many, 365 days in a year it times 23 matter. is just simple multiplication. It doesn't matter. Done, done what? what? Have sex? I, I mean, had one of those one time in my life. How, long, how many times did you do? Because I was, I, I had gotten to a car accident and I was on. That was the first time I was ever on, I think it was Oxy. It was some type of painkiller, so I'm assuming it was Oxy. Yeah. And that was the first time I was ever on Oxy, and Oxy had me feeling crazy. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And like, that was when you're young. When you're young, you've experimented with having sex high with, off weed, and you've experimented having sex drunk. So being on the Oxy, you like, oh, I know sex probably feel crazy. And it was just like one of those times, it's like, yo, let me just see how many times I could nut in a day. And you were jerking off or having sex? No, I was having sex. I was having it's sex. Impressive. It's I was impressive. Having sex. I don't I don't I don't remember past. I don't think I don't think I did it more than three though. I don't remember getting all yeah, more I think than three. Three is the most that I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I don't remember anything more than three, yo. Yeah. And two of those are absolutely useless. The last one is definitely. I think I, I'm not even point. joking when I say like, that. What are we trying to do here? What at, are we trying yeah. to do here? At one point, I was barely getting erect towards the the in latter yeah. times, and I feel like I could have been. I could be making this up, but I feel like I might have been skeeting blood at that point or something. Wow. I'm Are, saying I'm, I was high. I probably was making this up. Yeah, I don't know if you were coming blood. Sperm is nothing but blood. Y'all know that though, right? That's not true. That's Look not it true. up. That's not true. Look it up. Charlotte. Sperm is blood. Taylor, Google is sperm blood. I think sperm is sperm. Google is sperm blood, yo. It's sperm blood. <laughs> it's it's sperm blood. <laughs> Most often, no cause is can the be blood found for the sperm. blood and semen. No, no. Click on that. It, the thing you're saying is so ridiculous, Google doesn't even understand it. <laughs> They're like, he must mean something else. So it's solving other questions that you yeah. don't have. Hold on. Put what is sperm made of? What is sperm made of? They're not the same, but they serve the same purpose in, in that they get nutrition into the pores. See, hold on. Come, come on. Put the oh, mic on to the smart guy. <laughs> come on. He That's tried to help about. you. He tried to <laughs> bail you out. Where's the mic? What is sperm made of? Are you talking to your mic? No, he's not. There's a the mic over there. Come on. <laughs> Come what on. is sperm made Bail out, me out of? Bail me out. Nah, first you gotta say his name. What is Ashwagandha. Uh, Ash, 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 Ash. <laughs> no, it's not actually blood. It just serves the same purpose. So you're wrong. It's not blood. So, ah. so there's sperm yeah. running through our veins? No. No, there's no... So what do you mean it's serve the same purpose? <laughs> What's the brilliant idiot? I don't care. I can be wrong. I, I, that's the, that, the title saves us every time. What, is it, what, is, what does it mean to serve the same purpose, though? Tell, explain that to me. Semen contains citric acid, free amino acids, fructose, enzymes, phosphoro, potassium, zinc. It just provides the nutrients to your balls the same way blood provides nutrients to the rest of your body. So it's Show, the same I'm purpose. I'm going to tell you something, bro. First of all, that, that sounds very tasty, right? What you just described. Citric acid, free amino acid, zinc, enzymes. <gasps> You might need to drink your own sperm, bro. <laughs> I'm serious. Drinking it. I'm not even joking, y'all. 
No, I didn't try. You got a little bit got on your a mustache. Little, little that bit. don't count. Yeah. Yo, I hit this my face. might be the key. I hit my face. Go back to that top 10 <laughs> shit that we read. All of that shit is in sperm. <laughs> Protein shake, bro. <laughs> 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 I'm you might need to make this perm protein shake, bro. You might be right. That might be it, man. Might be right. What else we got, Taylor Gang? Lots of Pippins. And I and you know what though? You know the beauty of, I, I like about the Lots of Pippin thing? Everybody has had enough sex to know that that's probably not true. So that's not even one of those things where women are looking at your man like, damn, you need to step it up. They know. They know that shit. They don't want true. that either. Nah, nah, nah. Taylor. Four times a night? No. But you want multiple. I do want, like, let's go around. Like, I have a high. What do you mean, let's go around? <laughs> she, she Rounds like, mean four times a night, Taylor. Four, go on the mic. Go, go on the, the mic. mic for this ridiculousness. <laughs> Hold on. Four <laughs> times is just four rounds, Taylor. I feel like, what are y'all talking about? Because we could do one in the morning time, afternoon, and the evening. That's too much. Every day? Afternoon, not every, much. no, no, absolutely not every day. No, no, I don't need every day. When? Like three times a week. I'll be you want to have Jesus. sex three times a day, three times no, a no, week? No, no, no. Um, depends. Three <laughs> times? It depends. Especially if I'm high. Yeah. <laughs> she said, especially if I'm high. <laughs> Jesus Christ. For Taylor. what? Why? I, mean, I have, well, you know, girls have multiple orgasms, though. If I only get off once, and that's the thing, too. If you only get off once. It's another thing. If, okay, so if we have sex once, right? Yeah. And I have multiple orgasms, then I'm good. Oh, but, so you want multiple orgasms. Yeah, so maybe I should So whoever say, you get it is fine. Right. Why is one orgasm not enough? It's just not. Do you know what an even orgasm when I, is? Even when I mask. <laughs> Even when I masturbate, it's just it's not enough. But what if you don't know what an orgasm is actually, and you're <laughs> I feeling do know what something an orgasm else. is. Don't do. Don't well, do that. an orgasm should feel like extreme relief. Yeah. But you're still and then I'm ready up. to go. No, I'm ready to go back again. Hmm. We just both different though. Ha! Oh, damn. Are. Ha! We are. That was hard. Yeah, I, yeah. I know. I was saying as just a female and male. That's yeah, you're all right. I'm saying. You're right. You are built different. <laughs> you can run it back. I mean, that's just exhausting looking at this fucking Larson. But I mean, store. think about it. Y'all do most of the pumping, though. It's not like who males like y'all. Like when it comes to sex, y'all are doing more of the work. Oh, I'm not. Don't there? try me, Alex. I'm not no fucking just starfish. Lay there? I'm what is not a starfish? a starfish. I'm not she just a starfish. Lays there like a starfish Don't at try the bottom me. of the ocean. Don't try me. First of all, first of all, yeah. But at the same time, how do you think I got these hips and ass? From sitting just, on your fucking no. ass from doing your fucking nothing? No, no, from genetics? no, no. How dare you give no. some bum no. ass Philly no. John no. But I'm just saying the credit I'm working for your out. Mama's jeans. I'm just saying I'm working I've out. I've seen your mama. Charlemagne. 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 Hold on. No, that's Shala. not disrespectful. What you want your mom to have? No ass built like a board. What's your mama bringing me next week? Nothing at all. Stop playing. <laughs> Ew, stop playing with me. Yo. What is your mama bringing me next week? What does your mama like to make for, for me? <laughs> Some corn bread. <laughs> first truth. of all, Tell first of all, Tell first of all, first of all, that's all I want to truth. I love Taylor's mama. <laughs> Taylor, <laughs> tell the oh, truth. What does your mom like to make for me? What does she like Don't to make for Don't even say you? like for you because you haven't Rex. had it in a while. I had it though. Oh, <laughs> I had it though. What was I'm not it, playing, First of all, I'm Taylor. not playing with you because I have a father and he will fuck you up. I love Stop your playing dad. with me. I'm just telling you. <laughs> what did she make for us? What did she make for us? <laughs> Since I gotta My say, mom us. knows how to make make a uh, good pie Ooh. and great pound cake. A pound cake? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Is pound cake a, a suggestion? Shut the fuck <laughs> up. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. I she love makes a great apple pie, potato. too. Wow. I love Taylor's mother's pie. I hate y'all. <laughs> I hate y'all. Y'all not about to do how this. Dare you y'all not give about to do that. these dirty Philly Johns the credit for the work your mom put in. Your mom's genetics got you like that. Taylor's That's genetics. True. That ain't no man. I'm saying how to keep it up. Yeah. No. Yes. No. Uh, I'm working out too. No. All right. Y'all be giving these men all the credit, bro. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Got Just your disrespectful. Word. Got your guys. I hear sounding like Dr. Miami for Dis no damn reason. Disrespectful. Let's pay some bills, man. This Taylor, I just can't believe you would just do that. You just discredited your mama's jeans. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> for no reason. 
This episode has been brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your all, your business online. Stand out with beautiful websites, engage your audience, and sell anything, your products, your content you create, and even your time. If you want to have a legitimate business, you need a place on the greatest marketplace in the world, and that is the internet, and Squarespace makes that possible. Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content expertise in a way that actually fits their brand. With member areas you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up your time and then you can sell access to that time and gated um what uh, videos uh, online courses newsletters everything you can create pro level videos effortlessly squarespace video studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to help tell your story grow your audience and drive sales stand out in any inbox with squarespace email campaigns collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site Colors, logos, etc. You could use these built-in analytics to measure every impact of every single send. You could use those insights to grow your business, learn where your site visits come from, and analyze which channels are most effective. So if you are ready to improve your business and build one, a legit one, make some money online, head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let's get back to the show. Guys, this episode is also brought to you by the hardest dicks on the planet. Blue Chew has got your back and has got your girl's back sticky. Same active ingredient that's inside Vi uh, Viagra Cialis but this is the truest one that we rock with so make sure you rock with it too and you know what you're going to get your first month free all you got to do is pay $5 shipping when you go to bluechew.com okay and make sure you use that promo code idiots they got you your girl deserves it your wife deserves it your side chick deserves it ladies you deserve it that girl that you might be going out on a date with and you want to impress for the first night set the tone and let's get back to the show yes um, back to the show. What's going uh, on with you, man? What's up with your life? I feel good, man. You do? I do. I really feel good. I'm That's not even good. joking when I say that. Um, salute to my man, Elliot Connie. Uh, Elliot Connie is one of the most culturally competent psychotherapists that you will ever meet in your life. Um, had him on Breakfast Club this morning. Uh, is I he your personal one or? Yeah, he is. Oh, wow. I didn't know how I would feel. Sharing him with the world. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You know, because um, he has, like, I don't know, man. He, he he does this thing where he says he always wants to break your brain. He wants to break your brain. He wants to break your mental health. And I just feel like he has, um, he, he it's called selective, uh, selective, no, it's called solution. Um, oh, I'm going to tell you all right now. It's called solution-focused therapy. Okay. So it's called solution-focused therapy brief therapy sessions but it's about it's called solution focused therapy so his whole thing is like you know we can sit around discussing the problems but he likes to get right to solutions and man i i have to admit like a lot of things that he's been talking to me about a lot of things that i've been implementing it's been really really working like what, you know what what's I mean? something I mean, I know it sounds crazy to say but even like in regards a lot of it is more parenting for me cuz you know parenting is like my biggest concern more than anything right now, parenting, being a husband. And, you know, sometimes you question yourself as a father, especially me being a man raising young women, because I'll beat myself up for yelling. You know what I'm saying? Well, what are you yelling at? Um, I mean, just like I'll yell when like one of them, like one of them, one of them's not listening. It's really just one of them, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? But it's like when one of them's not listening, and like I find myself getting really short tempered and yelling. But then that yelling turns to me sitting down with them, having an actual conversation, because those are things that never happened to me when I was younger. You know mm. what I mean? When I was younger, growing up in the 1900s, it was do as I say. You know, period. You know, there was no explanation, but kids are like naturally curious. So a kid's gonna ask you why. If I say, of course. you need to go do that, why? Of course. There's no need to get short with them and feel like you're being disrespected. Because I person, fucking said so. That's what you wanna say. But at the same time, they're trying to learn. Sometimes you do, but I yeah. never, my, my approach is like, 
this is the reason why. Yeah. And, and what you realize is, man, you're raising more intelligent kids that way. You're raising, you know, uh, kids who understand, I guess, I don't want to say conflict resolution, but understand how to communicate you know, yeah. more that way. And, you know, one of the biggest things, yeah, like even having a a, a, a a teenager is like, you know, you always feel like your teenager's disrespecting you. And, you know, mm. one thing that he said that, he said it on the show today, but this is something he told me in a session, was that um, you want your kids to disrespect you. And you're like, what? What? Excuse me? You know, but he has a reasoning behind it. Can I? Can we play it, Taylor? Mm -hmm. you, you, you told me the other day that you feel like kids should disrespect their parents. I think kids, I think parents you should expect. <laughs> I, I, and, and, I'm gonna, <laughs> Jason, let me, let me put that in context. How many of you guys in this room are, would like to raise your children to be strong-minded, independent thinking, ambitious kids or adults, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you are going to instill that, part of that is confidence, part of that is voice, part of that is knowing I have value. And when you're teaching your child that, and I'm talking five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The first place they practice voice is on you guys. Correct. That's the first place. So you might say to them something, and I'm going to tell you something. My mother, I had two brothers. My mother would say, Ellie, go do the dishes. And I would be like, why didn't you ask one of them? Mm. And that would get me popped. You know, that, that would get you looked That's at. usually popped, and I told you so. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. But if you're teaching your child to be confident, to be strong, to be, to value their voice, they should ask those kinds of questions. Mm. And it allows you to parent them. But we shouldn't. Uh, translate that as disrespect. They're just practicing. That's not disrespect. They're like, practicing their voice. But that was in our era. Bro, in the 1900s, yeah, that was, that was disrespect yeah, yeah. I would never yeah. think to talk back. And I, I would never even think to talk to my parents the way my kids talk to me. But it's like, it's not, It's as Ellie said, it's not disrespect. It's just them being like, asking valid questions. But that's right. also the way white people raise their kids, doing that. Yeah. Because like my grandmother, you could never, it, she'd tell you whatever to do, paint the house, just go paint it. You may <laughs> not know how to paint it, but she won't paint the house. We confuse respect for silence. And I think that's a problem. I think we have mm -hmm. to allow our well, children. Expound on that? We, well, we if if I say go paint the house and the child says, yes, ma'am, and goes paint, we think, oh, that's such a respectful child. But that same child if some strong-willed 17-year-old kid in high school says, let's go skip school, they're going to say, yes, sir. Like, we mm. have to teach them to question, why am I painting the house? I should understand the context of the life that I live in. Mm. Why am I painting the house? For these reasons. Okay, now it makes sense to me. And I understand. And I can do things that I understand and push back on things I don't. That's why white folks got kids on leashes in the malls. Because it's like <laughs> that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, run free, do, you know. Yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I don't agree with you with that, Elliot, because it's, and this is going to sound crazy. All right, right, here we go. I got six kids. So if I tell one of my kids to do something, yep. I expect it to be done. I'm yep. not going to do it with something that's going to be detrimental to their health, something that's going to hurt them. It's part of, of, of what everybody needs to do to be in this household. I agree with you. Meaning if, 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 if dad's chores or, or dad's way is to make the money, pay the bills, do this, that, and the other, and I ask you to shovel the snow, don't ask me why. Don't say, well, why didn't you ask this 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 you know sibling? Why didn't you ask this one? No, because I asked you to do it. But you could explain it to them just the way you explained it just but now. Envy, envy, listen, you I shouldn't have to. Like, because now you know, you're because because when you say when you say, hey, dad, I want to play basketball and cleats cost five hundred dollars, I don't say. Well, they're cheaper cleats. I'm like, oh, your grades are good. Okay, I got you those cleats. I but didn't you should have that conversation on both ends of the basketball. spectrum, though. Now, I agree with you. If, if I say to my child, oh, go do funny. this. <laughs> You oh, want them to go and do it. I ain't gonna say paint the house. Like, paint but, the house no but, 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 but why that's a really good example is to a, chi a child. They have thought without wisdom. Mm -hmm. So you might ask a child to mow the lawn, but in oh, this is a good point. Hold on. Thought without wisdom. Child have thoughts thought without wisdom. Without wisdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you might ask the child to mow the lawn, but in their child brain, you asked me to paint the house. It's not. You have to help me understand the world in which I live. And I think it's both ends of the spectrum. If the child says, I want to play basketball and it, I need $600 Jordans, I, I don't think it's enough to just say, oh, you got good grades. You, you want to sit them down and explain to them, like this $600 is hard to earn That's right. and you're worth it. Mm -hmm. And then that child thinks they have value and that child understands the world in which they live. Mm -hmm. But remember guys, like they get confidence, they get thought, they get spontaneity before they get wisdom. Yeah, mm -hmm. see, I grew up getting beatings. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I can tell you right now, beatings don't do anything for a child's confidence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Beatings don't do anything for a child, but make a child insecure and make a child question 
everything. So can, can so, I ask a question yeah. about that right there? So what what would his suggestion be? Like, let's say you want your child to mow the lawn or whatever. What would and he goes, why do you want me to mow the lawn? Have the conversation with him on why he needs to mow and the then, lawn. And what is that conversation? Like, what would that I be I mean, for, for you? me, it would be like, you need to mow the lawn because, you know, this is part of growing up in this house. You don't have a job. Oh, we all need to contribute we to this We all home. need to contribute. You, yeah. don't, you, you don't have a job. You yeah. know what I mean? I do what I do to make sure things move uh, coolly in this house. Your mom does what she does to make sure things move coolly in this house. You need to do what you need to do. And that's just part of growing up and, 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 and of, 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 of coming of age. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, my daughter's a teenager. She got chores now. You know, even my seven and four-year-old. Y'all have to clean your rooms. Like, that's just mm. part of living in this house. So that's your explanation. Your Absolutely. explanation is this is the responsibility you have for Absolutely. living in this house. Absolutely. And the older you get, the more responsibility you have that's living it. in this home. That's it. That's and that's, it. yeah, I like that. I like explaining to them because I do agree with you. It's like, I've never done what I was told in my life. Ne ever. <laughs> are forced, are forced to do. Oh, I refuse to do anything that I'm forced to. But, uh, but uh, my whole life has been like fighting for no rules. But I have repeated the things that my parents did that I observed so I really kind of locked in on their behavior, and then I think that I have continued that behavior. Right. And I think that I'm very fortunate that I had really good parents so that they set, like, a good standard of what behavior should be, like hard work, et cetera. But not everybody has that shit. Absolutely. So then, like, what do you do if you're a parent and you are emotional and you are irrational and you do act in a way that you don't want your kid to act, but you're acting like that in front of them? Like, what do they do? They have to go through therapy? They got to fix that shit? Like, yeah, and I think about me, I, you know, what I was thinking about, I was thinking about, God damn, how much pain were the adults that I grew up around going through that they could just beat us the way he did <laughs> with the extensions cords, with the switches, the way they just used to haul off and pop us with the hands, all of that. Because the reality is I get... I, I I beat myself up when I raised my voice mm. at my children. I can't even yell. But you got girls at my bro. kids. Yeah, I guess it's different. If you had a badass little teenage boy <laughs> checking you in front of your wife, telling you to go mow the lawn, yo, yo, imagine your son was you asked him to mow the lawn, and you go, why? So you could hug that tree later. I'm kicking him in his chest. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Roundhouse, bah! Imagine, you know yo, saying? why are you always hugging that wood, Maggie? And, 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 so you said that to your son. <laughs> what if your son in your home in front of your wife said, "Why are you hugging that tree, yo, that's Maggie?" Wild as hell. If your son learns gay slurs because yeah, I, would, I would be that's the dad not a gay that, slur that's maggot i know but i would be the I, but, don't do that okay <laughs> <laughs> maggot don't hit the same i would be the i would be the dad that let the son watch all the old movies yep and, and then you wonder where movies. he gets it from hey man you're right those were the nukes back then boy i'm just saying because you know especially in this era of bullying oh like if you if you raise your kid with a 90 sense of humor oh forget it. nobody will play with him oh forget mm -hmm. it nobody will play with oh, him or her it. he need okay? to be strapped yeah, word he need to be strapped because he's going to make some school shooters. Word up. <laughs> that's the type of bullying. That's the type of bullying that's going to make some, bro. That's a fact. Man, we got to keep man. those words out of their mouths. You ain't lying, yo. It's so crazy. I don't know, man. That's the, that's the most difficult thing in my life right now. Which parenting. is what? Finding a way to discipline your kids. Parenting, yeah. yeah. Parenting is, I mean, because, you know, I, I said this on the air and a woman called in because I said there's no manual to it. And the woman called in and she was like, there's plenty of books in it. Eh. Mm. Everybody got a plan until you get punched in the face. Didn't Mike Tyson mm. teach us that? Like, mm. you, you don't know it until you're in it. And I got four. Mm. And they range in ages. You think you've gotten better with oh, each definitely. one? A hundred percent. So that your was, last kid is getting your best parenting? My, my third and fourth. I wasn't even present, like, really. I mean, I was present as far as physically. But emotionally. I was in these streets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was out here. I was still running around, getting drunk and high and on drugs in LA. And I was wilding. I was living this new radio star life. Like I wasn't a, a, the, the parent. I, was, I wasn't even close. Now, do your, do your kids know that or were they too young? Nah, they don't. I mean, I don't think they know that. Uh, nah, 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 I don't think so. I mean, I, I talked to my oldest daughter about it, though. What do you say? We just have a real conversation. I tell her the truth. You know what I mean? Like, just because. Just because she's, she's 14. Like, she'll be 18 in four years. <laughs> like, in four years, she'll be starting college. Like, you should be having those conversations with your teenage kid. Think about think about when your dad first started having real conversations with you. How mm. old were you? I don't remember. But it had to be. You, you, you were I've old never, enough, to, I'm sure, to process it, right? I've never felt 
like my conversations with my parents changed at a certain age. Wow. See, that's a blessing, bro. And I've always felt that's like I could tell them whatever I was going through emotionally. That's what I want. That's all I want. I'm very that's lucky. That's all I want. Very lucky. But also my parents have been in therapy my entire life. So the idea of like sharing things with them, the idea of depression, the idea of anxiety, like these things weren't like novel things for me. I'm incredibly lucky that I grew up knowing that these things existed. And I was like analyzing my emotional stability constantly. So like when I felt that I was maybe down or whatever, I wasn't like, why do I feel like this? I knew what these yes. concepts were yes. so I could kind of prepare myself for them. Mm. Very that's, lucky. That's all I want, wow. man. And, and and see, that's why I like therapy, even like for, you know, my, my older daughter, like, I put her in therapy just because, you know what I mean? Just so she yeah. can learn how to continue, how to process her emotions, learn sure. how to communicate, all of that good stuff, you know what I mean? And she's, she's smart enough to know like, nah, this ain't this therapist ain't for me. That's you good. know what I mean. Yeah. Like she she's a very good communicator because I'm a good communicator, but not because anybody taught me how to communicate. Can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. Is it difficult now that your like daughter is old enough to consume the content that you put out? Like it's the worst. Yeah, like it, how does that affect how you create? How, how, d are you worried at all about the things you've done in the past and how it could make? No, nah, I'm not worried about none of the past shit. Because the passion is the passion. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not worried about that. I'm more concerned about what I say now. I'm more cognizant of things that I say now. And it's yeah. interesting because I used to have a program director. I don't know if it was George Cook or Chris Connors. They used to always tell me, talk like your mom or grandma is in the room. And it's like, well, that's not what's going to make this happen. But, but to, 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 <laughs> to, to, to a certain extent, yeah. But I never talked around them anyway. You know what I mean? So now it's more so like, Talk like your daughters are in the room, like your daughters are going to hit us because they do. Mm. Like, oh my God, they're in high school. Like these kids, who do you think is consuming this shit that we put out? Like the yeah. brilliant idiots in the Breakfast Club. Like, I like, guess nothing crazier than sitting at dinner and one of your daughter's friends turns to you and was like, "I was on YouTube and I was, you know, I'm, I love Scissor and I was just going down to Scissor and they they was feeding me things and I saw you talking to Scissor. Oh. I'm like, oh shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like you know, you just don't know. Which, what, what, what version, what, what variant of Charlemagne they're gonna see? Yeah, you know. So, <laughs> so do you get anxiety? Not anxiety. It's just like I'm just cognizant of the guilt? things that come out of my mouth. Any guilt? Nah, not guilt. Nah, it was, nah, nah, none of those things. Not guilt. Nah, because the funny part about kids, as we know, kids have way more of a sense of humor than these fucking curmudgeon ass adults yeah, yeah. who grow up to be sensitive about everything. Kids yeah. just find shit funny. Yeah. You know, so when they might run across some shit, that's just some funny shit that they see. You well, know what also, I mean? Also, kids, in, you know, their, their very nature of finding themselves is rebellion. Yes. So if what they see is a bunch of sensitive people offended by everything, they want that to see becomes what that is. uncool. So they want to rebel against what is uncool yes so if we're like for example like in the 80s or whatever like uh or in the 60s whatever the fucking like hippies and shit were all around right like things are gonna button up the next generation is gonna be super buttoned up and almost conservative and that's gonna constantly flip-flop back and forth democrat conservative liberal conservative and um it's yeah that's just rebellion it's gonna well, be the in conversations them. that they're even having is like Mind blowing. Like what? It's like my daughter even just tell me about a conversation because they all had to pick a topic that they want to debate on, and they the, like the oil pipelines, and like you know, somebody was like something about religion or politics. It's like nah, nah, nah. That's just gonna cause an argument. Like you know what I mean? Like the fact that they're even aware of that. Oh, they like, said that they stopped the conversation because they thought it would cause arguments. Yeah, it was like I, they was like nah, like that. That's just gonna cause argument. Let's talk. You know, and I'm like wow. At like dinner with you? No, 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 no. This is like something they're doing in school. Just some, some she was telling me that they're doing in school. Like they all got to get in these mm -hmm. different groups and have these teams and pick one topic to present to the class. But they were in the process of them picking all of these different topics. Mm. They were shooting certain things now just because once I'm like eh that's gonna cause arguments you know what I mean that's gonna cause debates and I was like that's right you never you never debate you never debate politics and religion remember those days <sighs> well we like to do that all the time we okay. do but remember when we used to keep politics and religion to ourselves never I've never been able to have yes, a, you did. Uh, I've never been able to have a, like a limiter on conversation really yeah wow now I okay here's my my last question uh -huh. <sighs> now that your daughter's probably in the age where she's you know if she likes boys, she's liking boys, whatever, relationships, that kind of stuff like that. Is that and not difficult in terms of uh, will you be okay with the girl or the guy she dates or whatever? Like, that's going to be difficult. But, like, 
her perception of your relationship. Mm -hmm. She's lived for two Charlemagnes, right? She's lived for faithful, loving husband. She didn't, she didn't, I mean, she didn't see none of that, though. She didn't see. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's possible that she's aware because you've been so honest and so open and so truthful about mm -hmm. your past and also, like, where you are now. Right. Is there, like... And if this is too personal, we don't have to talk about it. But I'm just curious. Like, is there a part of you that's ever, like... How are you making sure that this version of you is the one that she's influenced by and she looks for in a man? I think she will be just because this is the version that she's probably, this is the only version she's seen in her formative years. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She was younger when all of that was so going on. So she didn't on. understand conceptually what nah, it was to not be in a relationship. All. Not at all. And one thing that I've always been very aware of is what people say about their parents. Like I always hear stories of, uh, you know, especially women telling me, the relationships they saw their parents have. Like they saw their dad hugging all over their mom or slapping their mom on the butt or constantly, oh. I love yeah. your mom, yeah. stuff like that. So yeah. th that sticks with women forever. And like Taylor, I'm sure you've seen that with your mom and dad, right? Not really, though. Really? Taylor says she don't see it. Of course, Taylor. Well, Taylor, why you don't see that? You don't see that your no, mom and dad? You know what's weird, though? Because I would call myself, like, when it comes to relationship, I'm real affectionate. Uh -huh. But I don't feel like I saw that with my parents. Like, they showed love. You saw and, love, though. Yeah, they saw love. They never argued in front of me. Like, yeah. I never saw that. Where but, do you think you got your affection from, then? I don't know. You don't have any fucking affection. I'm saying in a relationship, yes, I oh. am. I'm mad affectionate. Like, I love kisses, all that stuff. Yeah, I hate it. You believe this evil John. Why do you think I'm evil? <laughs> it's evil Philly John. If I'm evil, it's coming from you. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but I, I do agree with what you're saying, which is like, like I've learned what to expect in a relationship from my parents. Word my up. parents have had a loving marriage and have been very fortunate. That's not to say they haven't had like rocky times, but the, the way that they loved one another was really beautiful. And so that's kind of what I expect in a relationship. Now, that can also be you could argue like to my detriment because I won't tolerate anything else. Mm. There are some people that grow up in really dysfunctional marriages. So when they meet someone who meets the qualifications of that dysfunction, they are not deterred by it. That's right. That is what they expect. That's right. And that's a dangerous thing to continue I agree. in a relationship. You always always said this, uh, hurt people, hurt people. That's right. That happens in different ways. It's like if you saw the way that your mom treated your dad, you might think that's what a woman should treat you like. Bro, my dad literally told me when I was young and I confronted him about cheating on my mom, he literally said to me, you only got one girlfriend? Yeah. <laughs> like he looked at yeah. me in my eyes like, eh, one day you'll, 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 you'll understand. Well, I don't know. This is why I'm very proud of you. And and only, I don't mean oh, oh, that in a patronizing way. way. Now, I appreciate it. Only to grow up to tell me I was right. Well, because <clears throat> your father grew up. That's right. But, yeah, like, you have every reason to, like, stay in, in your ways, right? Yeah. And you have no real incentive to change it outside of, like, you love your family and you love your wife. But, like... Everything's going well in your life. It's not like you're hitting rock bottom. You're like, I need to change this. You hit rock top and you need to change it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. It's, it's, and, and I have people close to me who have decided to change, to not continue a trend in their family. Simple as that. Break generational curses. I didn't start going to therapy mm -hmm. because I was losing. <laughs> I was winning. Like but you were still feeling something was wrong. You weren't happy. You go to home and you're not happy. Like you, you. At the end of the day, when that's why Michael Jackson, Man in the Mirror, makes me cry every motherfucking time. Mm. Because that is the truth. When you look in the motherfucking mirror, yeah, that's what you see. Like, yeah. like if, if that that is the. You have to go to bed every night happy with who you are. That's it. If you're not doing that, trust me, you will know. There's a my my father's father was a by all accounts a horrible father. And uh, just not really about the kids. Just, you know, I don't want to put shame on the dead, but just not, just a just yeah, a kind yeah, of bad yeah. guy. And my dad is like my hero. I think he's a literal angel. And I'm like, wow, you broke that. Like you broke that. You broke the generation. I can't curse, wait man. to like do that for our kids. You know, like I, I, I cannot wait to continue that because I learned from this and it's like, 
you you could have continued it, but you broke it, man. Yeah, and that's that's fucking awesome. You should you, be really man. proud of yourself. You're, of you're only gonna look at it two ways, right? You're either gonna be just you're gonna be just like the hurt, right? Or you're going to break that generational curse. You're gonna do the exact opposite. It's, e it's either gonna be either or. You're either gonna be yeah. just like what you hate, or you're going to do the exact opposite. I did both. I I was just like it at one point, yep. but then when I saw myself really becoming that because I never I, I've always been aware enough to know I don't want to be that you didn't that. admire that behavior no, of your father at all not yeah. at all so when I started when it started becoming me I'm like what the fuck is happening yeah I don't want to be someone I don't admire how am I becoming what I disp I hate Despise. I don't hate I'm not yeah. saying I hate my dad I love my dad but the I, behavior. Hate, I hated his behavior yeah so I was just like god damn so that's what really, really made me like number one quit cold turkey I'm just like I'm Fuck We're all changing that. this. Fuck all the infidelity. I'm done with that. Yeah. And now I got to really go do the work on myself because clearly something's broken in here. That you even need to go do that. Absolutely. Goddamn, Lutely. Yeah. Yes. Um, Can you go on the I'm mic though? Out, but did for does China? I guess separate black and white because I feel like with my family or my parents, I knew they loved me, right? But they never said, "Oh, I love you" until I started getting older. Was that the same thing, Charlotte? My mom, my, my, the women in my life did. Not, not my dad. My dad really? never told me that shit when I was little. Not that I remember. My uh, parents both came from families that were maybe not the most like outward with their love. So I think that they were trying to change that. So they were very loving. You know, like saying I love you is a very normal thing with my family. Like I probably kissed my dad on the lips too old. Do you know what I mean? such things? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Like, I think you reach a certain age. Like, if our stubble's rubbing against each other, I think it's probably too old. You know, I don't but, know, uh, man. No, but I guess what I'm saying is that it was very open, and that environment was there. But I also think that came from like them being quite loving and affectionate. Now, I grew up in a dance studio, so like, dance in and of itself is quite affectionate it's tactile you're like touching holding moving like seeing them embrace was a kind of normal thing in life so but um uh, but yeah so that's what i assumed is normal and like that's how i am in in my relationships well it depends right like maybe uh both my parents they would tell me they love me yeah but they got divorced early so I mean, I'll that give you a good example. Up. So my mom's from Scotland. My dad went to Scotland for the first time. So it's one of the few stories my dad uh, still has locked in his in his memory. You know, his memory is gone. But uh, he always tells the story of my dad going to Scotland for the first time to meet my mom's family. And my mom comes from like very humble beginnings, the most humble beginnings. And then comes to America and becomes like three-time U.S. Uh, ballroom dance champion, like this immense success, right? And he goes there and there's no conversation about her success at all. There's nobody brings it up. Nobody even asks. There's no talk about what she's achieved. And this is her first time back in like years. And my mom was like, don't say anything. Don't bring it up. It's totally, and my dad was like appalled because he's enamored by this woman. My, he thinks that she's just the most magical human being, like comes from nothing and like built her success. Like, and but there's a perfect example. That's just not how they showed their love. Yeah. Now, if you ask my mom if she was loved from her family, she's like, I always felt I could go back. They would be there for me. They'd take care of me. They'd do whatever. She always felt there was love and support there, but it wasn't executed in the same way that maybe we would do here in America. Mm. You know. So, it's, so yes, different mm. cultures will, will behave differently. Because if you look at like black Dominicans, for example, they're going to love... Like Latin culture is just so full with love. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like your mother is yeah. so full with love. Oh, like yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Taylor's mom's filled with love. She is. No, no. Can I correct myself? But it I'm could be you. It could be you. So shut so up. Taylor, you the evil one. I'm not, no, don't do <laughs> I met that. your mom, yo. She's no, loving. She, yo. My mom is the most nice. She's she's very loving. But the I'm pies, saying when it came. Stop. <laughs> when I'm saying when it came to like raising us, like even me and my brother, we were having a discussion. Like. They didn't want to be like, all right, see, I love you. Like, that wasn't Why are you crying in out a sentence. Eye? I'm not. That's some crazy but I Philly remember. Shit, yeah. <laughs> Shashi crying out of one eye. This one still needs to be No, but only, the only reason why I'm saying stop, the only reason I'm saying that, because I asked him, like, how come we don't say 
we love each other, whatever. I asked them a, a long question. time ago. What but you but they were like, you, I can see why. Stop! <laughs> Look, but they were saying, they're like, you know, we love you. I know it, but we don't say it. No, that's I need all, to hear there's it. a difference that's between, what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, there's a difference between knowing it and like wanting that constant validation right. for it. You know, and and we're humans. We do need reminders. I need constant validation. Yeah, my wife is fully aware of that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, that shit is exhausting. <laughs> probably. Oh for my god. Yeah, it's not even just her. It's just every all my peoples. They know. They're like, oh, let them go ahead. Oh yeah. yeah. I hope you want to be seen. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, like literally, yes. that's how it is. And remind oh. them. Yeah, this me wanting to be seen. Yes. Made us millionaires. I so. would like to. It ain't even got to be about the money. It's just like. I was the kid who, you know, would go out in the yard and get stung by a bee just for attention. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you turned that into something. Rachel what? Success. What did Rachel point out? What? What did she say? <laughs> you were saying, you were like just standing there like waiting for her to hug you. Like, you want me to hug you so you can leave? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is crazy. She was Rachel not somebody who known me for 13 something years. Yeah. Yes. As she, yes. What the fuck? I need a hug before I go. God damn it. I don't want to make, 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 make me think y'all hate me. But isn't that crazy? Because most people probably never assume that about you. They'd probably be like, what? hey, man, this guy is the most confident dude in the world, and he's so self-assured, and he, he could do anything, he could achieve anything. And deep down, you're going into certain interactions with, where you're like, hey, I need to know that y'all think that I'm great. You think I'm funny. You think I'm loved. It's not even that. I just want, I just want to always... I want people to know I love them. Is I want people to know that I, I I want you to love me as much as I love you, right? And That's you feel like is. they might not until they prove they do. It's not even about the proving. I just want to feel it. I can't I can't explain. I just want to feel it. I don't need you. <laughs> all good. Like it's something as simple as a hug. All I wanted was a hug. That's all I wanted. Rachel. Why? 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 What? What would that hug? Because you never know. It's a Friday. Y'all going into the weekend. She going her way. I'm going mine. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I didn't. See, I'm not gonna see her this weekend. Yeah. Anything can happen, That's bro. That's true. Anything can happen. Like yo, tell your people you love them. Hug them. You know what I mean? Like you want your. If that is your last moments, like make those moments meaningful. Like that's mm. just how I feel, and I feel like that with all my people. Like yo. I'm not leaving. Oh, such and such still here? All right, let me go say peace if I care about them. You know what I mean? We're also at a certain age where we're like reflecting a lot more. And I think that the older we get within this, there's yeah. like a gratitude built in. We're so grateful. Yeah. You're so grateful you're able to achieve the things That's that it. you've been able to achieve, I've been able to achieve, and you're just so grateful for the people around you that helped That's you it. do that and loved you and supported you. So it's like, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, there's almost like a creepy, eerie feeling. We're at the age where people start passing away, like friends of ours that are older, but still like people we looked up to. <laughs> and it's just, man, oh, it feels fragile. Life Not gets even older, fragile, younger. Man. Like life feels fragile. That's yeah. what, that's exactly that's exactly the best way to put it. And the weirdest thing is, you work so hard. Ugh, life is so funny. You work so hard to, to realize none security. of this shit matters. Not even none of this matters because it, I, I, I don't I subscribe to that because I think it does matter. I think it's beautiful what we've been able to create and do. But, uh, but like, you work so hard for security and life has this way of reminding you that, like, there is no, security. no security. It's like, brother. if I want to do something, if I want to end this, I can end it. Like Right now. And accepting that is the hardest thing in the world. Also the most freeing, though. Oh, God, it must be so liberating if friend. you can accept I'm it. I'm getting it. Yeah. I think I'm there now. It's also the most freeing. I, I don't want it to happen, especially after having all these goddamn cardiovascular tests over the last few months. How'd those go? They were good. I mean, it's just like the only thing I had was uh, high cholesterol, but that's come down. Mm. And um, like my calcium test was like a 76. So it's like 10 like 10% like plaque on my heart arteries, I mean. But so you need to get that down too. No, you can't. Oh, that's just Oh, no, life. no, no. Once that's there, that's there. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. I mean, you, I guess you can have surgery and stuff, but I'm not even to that point. Like, I'm fine. Like, I'm... Right. Like, and it's, it's like, that's a that's a common thing. And doctors will, doctors even call it coronary artery disease, but it's not like a fatal, fatal thing unless it was much higher. You know what yeah. I mean? Unless it was much more plaque built up on the walls of my arteries. But, you know, stuff like that. All that stuff just does is make me appreciate life more. Yeah. And I think that's the moral of the story. Of what we're saying, right? Yeah. Let's appreciate life more. Like, even when you say the hug thing, it's like, yes, because I appreciate my people and I want them to know I appreciate them. You know what I'm saying? And this, when I leave yeah. them, I want to leave with 
the, the, the same way we greet each other all the time is how I want us to leave with each other. Ugh. That's it. Like, I don't ever just want to rush out somewhere and then you hear about something. You're like, what the fuck? I feel, I, I feel that every time I go see my, my folks, I go, I, and I kiss my dad when I leave him. And it's like this weird feeling where it's like, you and I, know. I, I make sure I get that. I love you. You know, I make sure I, I get that back from him. Word I make up. sure he hears me say That's it right. to him. That's and, right. and it's like, that's right. That's the most important thing, man. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters, bro. You know what? This episode turned out to be a really good episode. I was I was out of it in the beginning and maybe going through the motions, but sometimes being in like this these states like allows you to have a more honest, real conversation. Like Absolutely. When everything's feeling really good, it's easy to continue and coast on that. And that's fun too. You're silly, you like talk about shit that doesn't matter, and that's fine too, and that's awesome. But Sometimes when you're in a little bit more of a, I don't know, down state. When you're feeling pussy. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? What do you mean? Well, I gotta be pussy. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> when you're feeling a little vulnerable, Yeah, when you're feeling man. pussy. Yeah, that's when it. You, that's it. I just have to feel it back yeah. for the audience. You man. really just channeled your dad just now. So. <laughs> He's like, all them that feelings. Was that, that's no, that was shit. my dad. That was my dad. That was that was totally my dad. I remember, man. <laughs> that was a wild boy. My yeah. dad wouldn't have said the p word. I tell you that much. Uh, we know what he said. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, it's just <laughs> my dad. I'm like, it's okay, man. Sometimes I feel like a yeah maggot too. <laughs> like what? <laughs> I don't know. It's cool. It's cool it to is, get to it this. Is, it is. It's it cool is, to get man. to. Shall we do some asking idiots? If you want to, unless you just want to, you want to end on this note. Oh, we wanna... could just end on this. This is beautiful. I'm, I'm with this. Okay, let's Listen, go. Listen, man. Yes, it's okay. That's, it's okay. It's okay to not be okay, and it's okay to uh, express that you're not okay. And sometimes expressing that gets you closer. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Holding that shit in is just a burden. Oof. I'm with you, my brother. Vomit. Uh, as always. If you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.